about it or, or save lives or anything like that, right? Um, now, the next aspect I think is, bugs me every day when I read any news about it. Um, when the vast majority of time when they're reporting statistics about who's infected and how many people have died, they just say, you know, the virus has now infected more than 1.34 million people, which is from a couple of weeks ago. It's a lot more than that now, right? Um, and they very rarely say confirmed cases. They just say these are there are this many cases, there are this many deaths. But that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about confirmed cases, people who got tested or met some kind of standard. It's not the ex it's not that number. So they're they're really misleading people unless you you have to uh, add adjectives like confirmed cases or suspected cases or it's estimated or something like that, but they don't do it, right? Um, uh, because uh, the, the, the way that different countries and different organizations gather data and how they count exactly who's infected and, right, uh, is it, do deaths at home count, right? There was an article the other day, why is the, the death rate in Belgium so high? Because well, they count people who die in elderly care facilities and other countries don't. Right? Some people have a lot of testing, some people have very little testing. Uh, so all of these numbers are really incomparable, but you journalists love to compare data, right? Like an election, how many people voted for which person, right? They love to show this data and make these big charts and things like that, even though it's, it's misleading, right? Uh, so for example, the CDC, um, they're, they're, the American CDC, they're, they say they only report the deaths that have COVID-19 listed on the death certificate. So who knows how many deaths they're missing from this total because of their standard. And again, other places, other countries, other medical facilities in different cities or towns around America, around the world, count all of these things in very different ways. So it's, it's very misleading. Um, and our colleague, uh, Professor Johnson, um, already pointed this out a, a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, is it accurate, right? You have the crude death rate, but how do we know about this, right? This is not something that's been, that's been, uh, that we can say with certainty, but journalists like to say it with great certainty. Um, yeah, um, so for example, CNN, if you have anybody's watched CNN, they have, they shrunk down the screen now, and they always have this little bit in the corner, right? the coronavirus pandemic, right? Um, this is from April 6th, right? And they have this little thing in the corner with the, the John Hopkins University, right? Uh, the total cases, the deaths, United States total cases, deaths again. And that's not what those numbers are. These are confirmed cases that the John Hopkins University is kind of gathering from different sources. And it's fairly reliable, but it's not the number of cases or deaths. It's the number of confirmed or reported, right? And they, and they still do it even you know, today there's the same thing and they keep updating and it keeps getting higher and higher. And this is not what those numbers mean, but they still report it as if it's an election or a primary and the numbers are going up and we're adding the number of people who are voting and who's going to win or something like that. Um, and this is a very bad habit that journalists have. Um, again, because it gives people a very mistaken impression of, of the situation that's going on. <clears throat> And other people are starting to question this and try to report it in a more dynamic way or more getting a bit more data, right? Um, and again, this is something that journalists are learning more and more, so we, we can't really blame them. Um, so uh, John Byrne Murdoch, who works for Financial Times, right? So this Financial Times, it's a, you know economic business newspaper, so they need to have uh, people who are good at analyzing big data, Right, so, they, so he is going through and looking at different kinds of data to see how to measure this. And if you follow his, his Twitter, it's very interesting. There's new, new charts and new ways of looking at data every day, right? So a couple of days ago um, on April 26, he posted this, right? So far, I've analyzed data from 14 countries, finding 122,000 more deaths uh, in recent weeks than the usual, the usual average for those same places in the same weeks. Right? So in other words, we're not looking at how many people have COVID-19 written on their death certificate, but how many more people are dying. And um, so then that makes the rates much higher. And you put, right? So this begs the question, which data should you report? Right? Because these kinds of charts that he produced, right, this is the increase in deaths compared to previously. 
right? Uh, so for example, Belgium, the historical average, and then there's a spike, right? But Austria um, or Portugal or Denmark are doing much better. There's no spike in deaths, right? Um, and maybe this is a lot, this is something that journalists should think about more than just the, the number of cases that have been reported to the CDC or something like that. Because this shows um, that the death rate in places is a lot higher uh, than the reported deaths just from COVID-19. Right? And so having a wider variety of this kind of data would help show the situation a bit, a bit, in, in a, a bit more uh, detail and a bit more, giving more different perspectives to help people understand it, right? Um, and the next 